All right, guys, look over the sideboard here. Out of 1B on Trooper Tie Tuesday, you already know. Okay. Um, and I'm wearing my Trooper Tie clip. Okay. I had been missing this for a while. I was trying to find out where it was. Okay. Like last semester, like December, maybe. Maybe it was November time. I couldn't find it. I was like, where is this? And like, I knew it was in my backpack. I knew it was. And like, I emptied out my backpack. I scoured through it, dug through it. Nothing. Guess what? I found it last week. Guess where it was? In your backpack. In my backpack. Like, I just like randomly pulled it out. I'm like, I knew it was there the whole time. Okay. Anyway, have, have it again. Pretty happy about it. That was actually a graduation gift for my sister. But anyway. SWBA students will be able to apply properties of systems of linear equations to real world scenarios. Okay. So we went through this first example together. We went through that both the first two, actually. Um, and it says, hey... If you have trouble reading up here, guess what? You have it on your own sheet in front of you, right? You can read it on your own, on your own note packet, right, in bigger font. Okay? You always have that. Jenna is deciding between two cell phone plans. First plan at a $50 sign-up fee, $75 per month. Second plan, $30 sign-up fee, $80 per month. We want to know how many co after how many months costs would be the same, and we wanted to know what the cost would be. So we set up two equations. The first equation was based on the first plan. The first equation was based on the first plan. Then the second equation was based upon the second plan. Those were the equations we made. Okay? Kevin, you know where we're at? Uh, we yeah, we did. That's why it's filled out. I'm just recapping. Yeah, yeah. Instead of no cap, it's recap. Okay? But all cap. But all cap. Uh, cap lock. Okay? Um, why hasn't that worked its way into Selene yet? Anyway. Um, so... Like, if somebody's, like, you know, a perpetual liar, call them cap lock. You know, I'm just saying. Um, but I'm just thinking, I think that'd be pretty funny. But all caps. But um, every of the caps. I'm getting too far into this. All right, anyway. So we set up the first equation, and we said, hey, this is going to be the first plan. Second equation was the second plan. From there, we solved. Okay, we talked about what fees are going to be monthly, what fees are just going to be a one time, and how we wanted the cost to be the same, went through it solved. Questions on that? Something we've done before? Okay. Next one, we went through and we did this one too, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this was a very similar setup, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. We had one cable TV provider and then the second cable TV provider. And we went through and we really did basically the same thing. We had 60 plus ADM yeah, equals C. Then we had 160 plus 70M equals C, right? Okay. And it was based upon the first cable company and the second cable company. Okay. It was based upon the first and second cable companies. Okay. And that's how we went through. We made our plan. Okay. We figured out, hey, which cable company is going to be better? Because remember, we talked about whether Brock or Kevin were right. Okay, we we're pretty sure Brock was wrong, but Kevin went back or Brock went back and forth so much we don't actually know because he never actually decided on something we don't think. Okay, but so that means he, probably by default he was wrong. Okay, um, should we? Here you go, Brock. Okay, that way you can take the L. Okay. Yeah. Brock, so anyway, Dakota, would that be big brain? I knew it. Okay, this is why I keep you around. Okay. They asked me that semester, they're like, hey, Dakota Kennedy, do you, wanna, do you want me to switch from class? Do you want to get him out? Do you want to kick him out? I'm like, no, he backs me up when I ask about big brain, small brain stuff. He's right there with me. He's my boy. Okay? Seriously, this happened. Okay? Anyway, I'm, no cap. No cap. Yeah, and that's what they said. And I'm like, heck no. Back me up. Do what you want. Okay, what? No. Okay. So anyway. There you go. Good caveat. This didn't record. You can hear it. Okay. With a hi, how you doing? And a handshake. Okay. So, example three here. Can somebody, will somebody volunteer to read example three? Addie's got this. This no packet. This is an old one. Why is 
underlined. Underlining important information is a good stuff to have. That is correct. Okay, so what is one piece of important information on this? What else, what other pieces of information are we given? Why is that true? Why is that true? Why is that a true statement? Why is it that they are, roses are more expensive than daisies? Okay. It's kind of a more formal flower, right? What other things, how many equations are we going to have? Two. We are going to have two equations. In each of those equations, on every other system of equation, what have we had? Two. Two what? Equations. Okay, we've had two equations. Within those equations, what have we had? X and Y. What are X and Y? They're called? Thank you. They're called variables, so they're representing. From this point, I was kind of taken over because I thought you were having a drink. No, you're good. Okay, so at this point, do we want to use X and Y? No. No? This is the R and D. Oh, wow. Called me out. I didn't even do that on my own. I would have gotten lost some points because I did not read all the directions. It says R for what? Present. Yeah, that seems quite a dinky. All right. So, should I put R down as a variable? Yes. yes. Write it down. What do I know about R? Where could I put it? We've got a table there. R. Where do you want to put it? Roses. Okay, we're going to put R under roses. Which box? We have number of flowers and cost of flowers. Number. Number of flowers. R could represent the number of roses. Okay. And it tells us to use what for daisies? D. D. So we should probably put that under? Number of flowers. Okay. Daisies are the flowers my parents had in their wedding. Hmm. What do we know about the roses? There are two R's and two Where should we put that information? The cost on the table. We are organizing our information to use it. This is why we can have you guys set up this information. What do I know about the cost of daisy? Okay. Now, Sam, what did Sam spend? $24.75. What box, Tristan, should I put the $24.75? Or should I ask Mr. Costle to so graciously put that in? Because we only have two more boxes left on this table. Good, because that's dealing with the money. $2.50, $1.75, a total of $24.75. Now, the top row in the table, other than the title of each of the columns, states number of flowers. I have one more piece of information I need to include. Tyler, what should I put for the total number of flowers? In the empty box on the chart that Mr. Costle has up on the board. Twelve. Twelve, because we know that he bought 12 flowers for his mother. Moms appreciate flowers, okay? Not going to lie. Just telling you, putting that out there. Now, we are creating these equations. So when we create equations, we have unknowns. What other pieces of information can we include to complete these equations? What are we going to do with R and D? They're variables. Okay, they are variables. What, am I, what did you say, Quentin? Divide. You want to divide. What happens when we divide numbers? Do they get bigger or smaller? Smaller. Smaller. Now, if I would say, do I know the number of flowers that he bought? Mm -hmm. We know he bought 12. Do we know how many of each type? Mm -hmm. When I use the word all together, what operation symbol does that make you think of? Add. Add. All right. So for our first equation, using the number of flowers and the variables R, D, and the number 12 and the operation symbol plus, <coughs> sorry, oh, my dream thought. How am I going to create my first equation? Anybody? Anybody? Two fifty R. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm talking about number of flowers, not cost yet. Oh. R plus D. Does that seem reasonable, Julie? Yes. Yeah. I got some roses. 
I got some daisies. All together, I have 12 of them. I don't know about how many each. Now, what do we know is the cost for every rose? Every rose has it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can you guys name that tune? What? You know, my man who like knew 1950s, it was the four tops last week, I think. Guns and roses, guys. Ooh, how do I know the cost? Of, what is the cost of every rose that I'm buying? So do I know how many roses I bought? No. Can I have a coefficient and a variable? No. Yes. Yeah. So if now I know every rose costs, what am I gonna, I'm gonna have 250 and what variable? R. All right. What am I gonna, I need an operation symbol. What do you think, Ash. Jacob? Subtract. What does subtraction do to numbers? Makes them smaller, makes it get rid of it, but I'm looking for, I'm spending $2.50 for every rose. Do I want to subtract the amount that I'm spending for every daisy at this point? Okay, so I need a different operation symbol. There's four basic ones. Add is correct. What am I adding to that? I'm adding just $1.75. Taken. B. Thank you very much because. I'm spending, I'm buying probably maybe a few more rows, daisies, I'm not sure, but I'm gonna find out. What do I know about the cost of them all together? Oh my goodness. What do we got here? Does this look familiar? We are solving systems of equations. What is a question asking us to find? Use your English skills. How many flowers? I don't know, but how can I solve them? I've got some options because we provided you with a toolbox of options over these last few weeks. What is one way I could solve these systems of equating the system of equations? Mike? System of this, equations. These, this? this system. How do you guys want to solve it? Your choice. Is that one of the ways we can solve it though? We have some general ways. We created a foldable, and in that foldable we solve by, we solve by what, Kevin? I wasn't paying attention. Is that a way to solve systems of equation? What's one way to solve systems of equations? Substitution. Substitution, and then substitution, what must be, what, what do we need to do? Get a variable by itself. Do we have that? No. Could we do that? Yeah. All right. Give me another tool to use. Elimination. Elimination. Do does one of these terms easily cancel out? Yay or nay? No. No. So we'd have to do what? Cancel it out. We don't just get cancel out. We got to do something first. What? Multiply. I'd have to multiply it times something. Do we want to do that? No. Okay, what's our third option? Uh, you were working on this yesterday, Tristan. What were you doing yesterday? Solving by? Y equals MX plus B. What is that? What, how do we call that? It's like, what's the general solution to that? Solving by? Starts with a G. Now, G dog. Solving by. Graphing. Use the coordinate. Graphing. By graphing. So, what do you guys want to do? Graph. You want to graph. That sounds extra to me on this. That's doing too much. Yeah. I like substitution. Why would substitution be helpful? When we substitute, you said you have to have a variable by itself. Would it be which equation could we easily get a variable by itself, the top or bottom? Bottom. Top. Okay. Why do you say bottom, Tyler? Easy minus 175 from 250. Okay. Easy. But we need to have a variable by itself. Would I need another step then? What? 
Would the variable 2.5R be by itself once you subtract the 1.75D? Nope. Nope? All right. That's all right. Let's talk through it. Curiosity helps build your neurons and your synapses. Okay, and discussion. There's no, there aren't wrong answers. It's just all about learning. So, Brock, you said substitution, right? Um, he said, um, uh, was this something about including and including? Really? Uh, said, that was Nico who said substitution. How, which equation could we easily create substitution? Or say have an equation with a variable all by itself, the top or the bottom? That's right, that was right, the train thought. I didn't sleep well last night, guys, sorry. Okay, why would it be easy to get a variable by itself in the top? They're by themselves. They don't have, what's that number in front of the variable called? In those, yes, they are one. It begins with a C, a prefix C. That's a Coefficient. So you guys want to do a substitution? Okay, which variable you want to move, R or D? Uh, is it a positive or negative? Positive. So it's okay to subtract R. Make sure that you're writing this information down. Your whole assignment today is all over this. She so said subtract R? <laughs> so what do we end up with if we subtract R? Yeah, we like to put we the. combine 12 and negative R? No. Why could we not? Excuse me. You're right. Yes, we can't. Why not? Why am I making it complicated? Because I want you to think no, about it. No, like, I'm saying, like, in general, like, look at all the stuff you have to do and you can just, like, guess a couple of things. Because when you get in higher level math, you're not guessing. So we have to build the skill. It's just like we have to build the skill of how to throw a football in for you when you're a little kid. Before you can, all those other things, right? It's the basic skills. Basic skills of math. I'm just saying. You learn to add before you could. You learn to count before you could add. You learn to add before you subtract. You learn to subtract before you multiply, and you learn to multiply before you divide. Just up in the game, man. Now we have an equation with a variable set equal to itself. What can we do with that information? Plug it in. We call that substitution. We're plugging it into. Where? For the R or for the D? For the R or for the D? D is equal to what? It's tell me D is the same thing as $1.95. D is equal to? R plus 12. What kind of R? Pay attention to those signs. So we substitute that information in. We now have the equation of 2.5 R, $2.50 for every rows, plus 1.75. When I have a number next to a variable, what math operation is going on? Multiplication. Multiplication. I have to have that negative R plus 12 in parentheses is equal to what? 24. Thank you, Kevin. 24. $24? Oh, excuse me, my bad. Now, what's the, what's the next step that we have to do? Uh, activity, the both sides. Before we do that. Oh, um, what's the distribute? What are we distributing? Nice job. Okay, so 2.5R equals 2.5R minus 1.75R. Now I have a to distribute not only also to the constant of that binomial. So I have $1.75 times 12. They're both positive, so I'm adding to that. What's the product of $1.75 and 12? Anyone? Anyone? Let's go through and let's work this multiplication, guys. I wrote it off to the side there. Maybe you can write it off to the side. That'd be a good tool. We go through. We say, okay, 
What's 2 times 5? Sully, what's 2 times 5? 10. 10. So I'm going to the 0 down here, the 1 up here. What is 2 times 7? 14. 14. But carry the, add the 1 to 14. 13. Add the 1 to 14. 15. 15. Put the 5 down here, put the 1 up there. 2 times 7. 2 times 1 is? 7. 2 times 1 is? 2 plus 1 is? 3. three. Now we go on and we have to put a 0 there as we're going to our next digit. Caden, what is 1 times 5? 5. Caden, what is 1 times 7? 10. Okay. And when Caden, what is 1 times 1? One? 1. Now we add these up. 0 plus 0 is what, Julie? 0. 5 plus 5 is what, Dakota? 10. Ten. 0 here, add the 1. 1 plus 3 plus 7. 1 plus 3 plus 7. Brock, what do you get? 1 plus 3 plus 7. Yep. 11. One here, carry the one. One plus one, Quentin? Two. Two. Okay. Now, we notice 2,100, that's pretty big. Wait a second. We had some decimals before that, didn't we? How many numbers total did we have behind the decimal point? Two. Two. So how many numbers total do we need behind the decimal point? Two. So we put those last two numbers behind the decimal point. Okay. And so we have 91. Do we even need the point zero zero if we have tiny one? Not really. Okay. You can put the point zero zero there if you want. Don't need them. Because they're just zeros. You can't say that about the point seven five. We need that. Now that's equal to 24.75. we do to make this problem a little bit easier on ourselves? What do we notice about those first two terms? They are alike. Can we combine them? Yes. I have $2.50 and I spent $1.75. I have how much money? Nice job. So now I need to make sure to represent that as a decimal. That will matter because we're dealing with money. Decimal points matter. Is it just 75? No. Why not? We need to include the R. Plus 21 equals 24.75. We have a two-step equation, folks. First step to solving for R. Jacob, what would you do? Minus. Minus what? Mm, try it again. Not, not 12, but it's what number? Uh, what number is next to the 0.75R? Not 12, but I think you're reading it backwards. Okay, so Jacob, we're down here. Okay. Minus 21. There you go, there you go. Okay, make sure we're following along, right? Okay, don't have your notes today? Okay. Okay, let's at least write down what we have. Okay, on that piece of paper, thank you for the piece of paper out, so let's write it, okay? Thank you. Okay. Subtract so 91 from both sides. So now we have $24.75, and we've spent $21, so we're dealing with whole dollar amounts for the 21. How much would you have left? Mm, he's 75. You lost 50 cents. Cost fifty cents to play a video game back in the day. Not <laughs> pinball. No, like this Pac-Man. They actually went to an actual building to play their games. W. C. Franks. Dad, give me some money. Sit there. Or. No, they went outside their house to watch went to a building. Actually play games. They're already in the building. <laughs> Get wrecked. Okay, that, yeah. It's surprising how games have evolved. 0.75R is equal to 3.75. What operation are 0.75R? Yep, they're, what operation are they currently doing? Multiplying. What operation do we need to do to undo that then? Let's do it off to the side. We know it's going to be R on the left side. If we do 3.75R, 
3.75, excuse me, divided by 0. 0.75. Well, what do we have to do with this decimals point over on the left? Move it. Move it, right? How many spots? Two. Two. So what do we have to do with the other decimal point inside? Move it. Move it the same amount. Okay, well, wait. Does 75 go into 3? No. No, okay. Does 75 go into 37? No. No, okay. So we're just going to be guessing and checking here, right, to see what, how many times it goes into 375. Well, if we're guessing and checking, personally, I'd rather um, do it done here then and do um, see how many times 75 goes into 375 by trying to multiply off to the side. Personally, I prefer that because I think we do a little bit better with that multiplying when we have it set up like this. Okay. Well, what do we know we need the number to end in? Five. Five. We want it to look like 375. So we know it needs to end in five. Okay. Well, if I take the last digit, five, 75, last digit is five, what numbers could I multiply that with and get five. it 10 and five? Five, what other number? 10. 10, no. Five. 10 would make it end in zero. Five. What about three? What's three times five? 15. 15. What's one times five? Five. Five. What is seven times five? 35. What is 9 times 5? 45. What do we notice about all those numbers? They're in 5. What kind of numbers did I pick? The Odd numbers. Odd numbers. What about even numbers? What's 2 times 5? 10. 10. Ends in 0. What's 4 times 5? 40. Ends in 0. 6 times 5? 30. Ends in 0. 8 times 5? 40. Ends in 0. What do we notice? Even numbers make it end in? 0. Odd numbers make it end in? Five. So we're going to want to try an odd number here, right? Five. Okay, let's try five. Five times five is? Five. Let's think smart. Think, think through this. Analyze through what we want to try here, guys. That's why we chose five. What is five times four, or seven, excuse me? Thirty-five. Thirty-five plus two? Hey, so it does end up being five, doesn't it? So R is equal to five. Now what's that represent, guys? Five... Five roses. So okay, we have five roses. Five, seven, yeah, and even though Brock didn't say this is what he's doing, what he is doing with that math when he says you take five, stretch from 12, is he's actually going back up and he's plugging it into our original equation, r plus d equals 12. He didn't think of it that way, but that's what he is doing. Seven. Subtract the five, and d is equal to seven. So we have five roses and how many daisies? Seven. Seven daisies. Did that answer the question we were asking? Yep. Now after you guys take a second and write this down, and I give you a moment to catch up in case you need it. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna talk highlight how we set this one up. Okay, it's important to know. All right. If we guys, if we look at previous slides here, if we look at previous slides here, and we look at example one, we had two cell phone plans. So the setup was one equation, guys. The setup was one equation was the first plan. The second equation was the second plan. Then we went and we had the same thing here on example two. One equation was the first plan. One equation was the second plan. Then example three, did we have two plans? Were we comparing two flower packages? No. 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 Sam was buying flowers. He didn't buy them from two different places. He wasn't comparing prices. He didn't have a startup fee for flowers. Okay? He's just buying multiple flowers. Okay? So we didn't have a first plan, second plan thing. So our setup here is different. And it's not like we can look at this first equation and it's like, oh, that's the first plan. Second equation, that's the second one. No, that's not the case here. We had them on the first two, not on this one. We're going to have two main types of setups. Repeat that with me. How many types? Two. two. Two main types of how we set up these problems. The first two examples were the first type. This example is our second. Okay? And here's how we spot this out. Here's how we spot this out. First of all, is there any talk about two different people or two different plants? No. No, there's not. Okay? When you see the first plan, second plan type, you usually see first company, first plan, first family, first group of people, and then you see the second group of people in this next sentence. This one is very different, though. 
We didn't see that at all. The whole time he was just talking about Sam and buying flowers for his mom. That's all that was happening. His mom wasn't buying anything. Only Sam was. And he wasn't going to two different places. He was looking at two flowers. And he bought both. Well, if we look up at the labels, I love to look at the labels for this type of problem. Okay? If we look at our numbers and what they're labeled in, we can see, okay, well, 2475. 2475 of what? Back up in the start of the problem, 2475 what? 2475 camels? Dollars. Dollars. What's the next number we see? What's the next number we see in our sentence? 12. 12. And that's 12 what? 12 flowers. Flowers. Okay. What's the next number we see? Caden, what's the next number we see after 12? We saw 2475 dollars, 12 flowers. What's the next number we see? $2.50. That's dollars. What's the next number we see? And actually the last number we see. $1.75. $1.75. Another dollar. How many dollar signs do we have here? No, how many dollar signs do we have here? Three. Okay. Well, so far, how many things have we been putting in an equation? We've been putting one, two, three things in one equation and one, two, three things in the next equation, right? So three dollar signs, what, what do we notice we did? Where did all the dollar sign numbers go? Where did all the dollar sign numbers end up going? Together in an, in an equation, okay? So all those dollar sign numbers, when we had three of the same label, we ended up putting them all in one equation. If we look back at examples one and two, there were not three of the same label. If anything, there was four. Here, we had $50, $75, $30, $80. That's four. That's too many. We don't want four. We want three. We don't want four. We want three. Same thing with the second uh, fa uh, example. $1, $2, $3, and $4 signs. We don't want that for this setup. That's the first plan, second plan setup. Third, three symbols setup. The three of the same label setup. We look for those See if we have three of the same label. We do. We have exactly three of that label. Great. We're going to put those in an equation together. We're going to put them in an equation together. Okay? I even want you guys to write a little note to yourself at the top. Put a little star. Put a little star. And say three of the same label. Three of the same label, okay? That's really important to know, guys. You guys are going to want to know this. You guys are going to want to remember this and reference back to this during your homework, hint, hint. Okay, questions on that? What do you mean? Okay. Yeah. You write small. Use extra paper if you need. Label well. Stay organized. Things we've been trying to teach you. Good question. Last example here. We're gonna see which kind of one this is. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go through this a little bit quicker here. Okay. Again, before Rihanna's family. Actually, I'm not really sure if that's Brianna or Brianna. Mrs. Morad, do you have a take? Yes. See. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna do. Brianna. Brianna. Bree's family. Spent $134 on two adult tickets and three youth this tickets. This is real life because you want to tell your kids that they cannot go to the amusement park. No. Yeah. You're going to hear a screaming kid. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Just saying. Okay. Bree's family spent $134 on two adult tickets and three youth tickets at an amusement park. Max's family spent $146 on three adult tickets and two youth tickets. What is the price of a youth ticket? Okay. This is where you have to plan and save. It's true. Okay. So, we just talk, I just talked a whole lot about three of the same label, right? Didn't I just talk a whole lot about three of the same label? Yeah. Do we have three of the same label here? No. Sully's saying no. How many dollar sign labels do we have, Sully? Two. That's not three. 
How many adult tickets do we, how many times do we see adult tickets? Two. Twice, that's not three. How many times do we see youth tickets? Three. Try again. Two. Two, oh, okay, you're asking the question at the end. How many times do we see youth ticket as a label for a number? Two. Two. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, big brain. Okay. So we don't see three of any label. But do we kind of see almost a first plan, second plan set up? Yeah. Instead of plans, they're people and their family. It's Bree's family and Max's family. It's Bree's family and Max's family. Okay? So we're going to do one equation for Bree's family and one equation for Max's family. Just like we did one equation for the first plan, one for the second, one for one family, one for the next. Okay? So if we don't have the three label thing, we're probably we're going to end up doing kind of a first plan, second plan, first family, second family. Okay? So, how might we set up this first equation, okay? Well, let's think through. What are the variables we might have here? What's one of the variables? What are we trying to find out? Why? Why, why are you saying why? Youth ticket. We could do Y for a youth ticket. Does that spur anyone else besides Quentin to think about what the other my ticket might be called? A for adult ticket. Great. Thank you, Soli. This is why you're my favorite Soli I've ever met. Not even close. I want you to know that. Okay. How might we do our first equation? How might we set up an equation for Bree's family and what she's doing? If we don't have anyone volunteer to put themselves on the spot, I'm going to put someone on the spot. So Nico's guessing, hey, 130, 134 is equal to 2 plus 3. Okay? So 134 is how much the family spent in total. Okay, I like that number being by itself on the side of the equal sign. I think that's great. 2A plus 3Y. Okay, why did you add 2A plus 3Y? Yeah, two adult tickets and three youth tickets. Do we know the price of the adult and youth tickets yet? No. No, okay, but we're trying to figure out um, how much the youth ticket costs, okay? But we know they bought two adults, three youth. So if you take two times the cost of an adult ticket and three times the cost of a youth ticket and add them together, you'd get what Bree's family spent. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it makes you more comfortable too, could we have written it in, um, if we flip the equation? Some, some of us might be more comfortable with writing it as 2A plus 3Y equals 134. Does it really matter which way we call it? Nope. No. No, okay. So does it matter which one you do? No. Nope. No, okay. Some of us might be more comfortable like that. Um, some of us might not be. Show of hands, how many of you guys like the orange one and the one on the right more? How many of you, um, raise your hand if you want, if you greatly prefer the one on the right. Okay, hands down. Okay, show of hands if you prefer the one on the left. Okay, cool. We'll do the one on the left then. More people voted for that. Okay, so in a similar fashion, how would we make the second equation for Max's family? Uh, let's set it up in the same fashion, though. So I get 3a plus 2y, and that's equal to what? 146. 146. Okay, so I have 146 is equal to that 3a plus 2y. Okay? And so if we were writing that the other way, that'd be, like Addy said, uh, excuse me, 3a plus 2y equals 146. Now, are either of these really set up for elimination no. or substitution? No. No. And do we have a graph? No. No, so we probably want to do graphing. Okay. Well, for a, for a substitution, what do we need? A variable by itself. A variable by itself. Would it be very easy to get a variable by itself here? Yeah. Would it be as easy as it was in the last problem? No. No, because there's, none of them have a coefficient of 1. Okay. For elimination, we like to everything to be lined up. Is everything lined up right now? Yeah. Is it in the same order as each other? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have on the in the purple, we have those constants 
equals a's y's, okay? Or in the orange, we have the a's y's equals constants, okay? Now, would we be ready to eliminate anything, though? If we added right now, would we get rid of any variables? No, because no, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 3 plus 2 is also 5, okay? So we need them to be the same number, but different what? Signs, right? Same number, different signs, okay? So what could we, could we get 2 to be 3? Could we get this first a? Could we get 2 to be 3? No. no. Could we get 3 to be 2? No. No. Could we get 3, two, three to be 2? No. 2 to be 3? No. No, same thing, okay? Could we get them to the same number, though? Yeah. What number could we get them to? Eight. 6. So what could we multiply this top equation by? Negative 3. Okay, negative 3. And what could we multiply the top bottom by? Okay, if we're multiplying the top one by a negative, we need the bottom one by a positive. positive. So it doesn't really matter whether you choose the top one or the bottom one to be negative. Okay? It doesn't matter whether you choose the top one or the bottom one to be negative. Okay? Because one of them needs to be negative. Okay? So here's what we'll have. Negative 3 times 134. Does anyone know that off the top of their head? Probably not. Let's write it off to the side. You know off the top of your head? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's 3 times 4? 12. Here are the 1. 3 times 3? 9. 9 plus 1? 10. Here are the 1. 3 times 3? Or 2 times 1? Is 3. Plus 1 is? 4. 402. And what kind of 402 is that? Negative. The negative. It's like, a, it's like an area code, huh? Okay. 402. What's negative 3 times 2A? Negative 6, yeah. Very good. Jacob, what's negative 3 times 3y? Three um, negative 9y. Very good. Negative 9y. Now let's do the second equation. 2 times 146. Brock, what's 2 times 6? Okay. What's 2 times 4? What's 2 times 4? Plus 1. <gasps> Plus 1. That, that, the one we had to carry? And what's 2 times 1? Okay, so we end up getting 292 with positive. What's 2 times 3a, Quentin? 6a. Caden, what is 2 times 2y? 4. 4y. Okay, now we can eliminate because what are we going to get rid of? What are we going to get rid of? What variable? A. Very good, Julie. So negative 402 plus 292. We might not know off the top of our head. Hey, what signs do we have? A negative and a positive. So what operation are we going to do? Subtract. 402 minus 292. Is this going to end up being a positive or a negative number, guys? Mm, try again. Negative because what number is bigger, 402 or 292? 402. Okay. 2 minus 2 is 0. Can we do 0 minus 9? Can we do 0 minus 9? Sure. No. no, we have to borrow. Make this a 3. Make this a 10. What is 10 minus 9? What is 3 minus 2? 1. 1. So we end up getting 110. Negative 110 is equal to 0. What's negative 9y plus 4y? Why blood? Yep, negative 5y. Now how do we get y by itself? We have this new equation. We like this new equation. We divide by negative 5. Don't know what 110 divided by negative 5 is? Have no fear. Let's write it off the side. How many times does 5 go into 1? It doesn't. How many times does 5 go into 11, Brock? How many times does 5 go into 11? Twice. Twice. Thank you for following along with me. It means a lot to me, buddy. How many times does 2 go into, or 5 go into 10? Twice. So, y is equal to 22. 22. Uh, nope, because we did a negative divided by negative, right? Which is a positive. Great question. Okay. So, what did we just find out? The price of which one? A youth ticket. Well, let's go back to our question. What was it asking us? What is the price of a youth ticket? What is the price of a youth ticket? Did we figure out what it asked? Yeah. Are we done? Yeah. Do we even have to go back and find the adult? No. No, it doesn't ask for it. Cool. 22 bucks. Yeah, it's called math. Hmm. I thought you figured it out before without that. 
Okay, let's write down what we have. Okay. Now there is a worksheet, right? I told you guys that ahead of time. Oh, Quentin, all of a sudden you're too good for that chair, huh? Yeah. That what I hear? Too good for it. What's up, my dude? Um, I do. You could have borrowed a while ago. What? Yes. You might want to listen to the don't do's real quick, though. Okay. One of those is for Mrs. Warren. She might not need it, though, actually. I'll think she does. Oh, there's some don't do on this? Yes. Can we not do number 11? Oh, no. Okay. You guys ready for a few don't do's? Don't do number four, seven, or eight. Correct. Don't do four, seven, or eight. Now on this guy, once again, I'm giving you guys some time to work. Give you guys a solid half hour here to work, okay? Now, I want you guys to go through this, okay? And on these, you can choose elimination or substitution, whichever one you like, okay? But um, what, as you guys are going through and setting it up, which is uh, the new part to us, how to set these up. That's the new part. Ooh, I went over last class in the day. We're there. Okay? Is um, which kind of setup are we doing? Are we doing kind of a first plan, second plan, first family, second family? Or are we doing three, three of the same label? Okay? Exactly three of the same label. Which kind of plan do we have? And then look in your notes to see which kind of one we can model after. Because you have three examples of the first plan, second plan, first family, second family. And then you have one example of the three... Um, three of the same label one, okay? So kind of look through these and say, okay, well, look at the labels, look at the numbers, look at the sentence structure, what do we have, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, let's go through and work with this.